Let them embody humility and selflessness. Remind them to value every sailor and civilian they cross paths with each day. Impress upon them the initiative, integrity, accountability, and toughness needed to do the right thing, especially when it's difficult. Embolden them to have ownership of what they are called to do, even when they are called into harm's way. So as these officers look to the horizon, prepare them for the challenges that lie ahead, giving them the physical, mental, and spiritual readiness to meet each one with confidence. As we continue to celebrate this moment, we ask for your spirit to reside with us and all those who stand to watch this day. In your name we pray. Yes. 
disarmament, demobilization, or reintegration strategy for the government of Iraq. He returned from Iraq in August 2007 and transferred to the current Manpower Allocations Branch as head of Manpower Analysis in the accounting section. In May 2008, he assigned a deputy and enlisted plan and policy at OPNAV M13. He was assigned to head of strength and planning analysis section and became head of strategic resource branch. In August 2013 to August 2015, he served as director of the Total Force Manpower Division at Naval Education and Training Command. And in October 2015, he assumed command as the Western Sector of Commander, U.S. Military Entrance Processing Command. And from November 2015 through April 2016, he served as Commander, U.S. Military Entrance Processing Command. He served as the Director of Business Operations in the N1 Office of Transformation, Deputy Director, Enterprise Support, and Director of Transformation. From March 2021 to July 2021, he served as the Chief of Naval Personnel's Chief of the Commander's Action Group. He assumed command of My Navy Career Center in 2021 and is the flag leader of the Navy Human Resources Community. His leadership is essential to the management and execution of Navy personnel, pay services, and processes, and to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy. We're privileged to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Rear Admiral Stu Sadler.
Now, Molly Burke once charged naval officers with the duty to use your position to sustain a word of liberty and justice, saying, the interests of modern warfare are not solely for waging war, or more importantly, they are means for controlling peace. Now, as you make your way to the fleet, you will be faced with decisions every day affecting sailors and their families. Whether you're building facilities tomorrow, tomorrow's Navy families will use, providing critical help or attempting care to the member, or leading division sailors into harm's way on deployment. No matter what your designator, you now assume the responsibility for our nation's most precious resource, its sons and daughters, who have committed themselves to its defense. <clears throat> In today's world, there's a lot going on, and your presence here is eminently important. I've had the opportunity to talk to leaders out there about what's happening in the Red Sea, the time it takes for decisions to be made, and the trust we have in our sailors out there to execute. And you will be in charge with that. So I've talked to you some about the call of leadership, but I'd be remiss if I didn't impart some practical advice to you as you prepare to lead around the world. You've probably heard this once before, but it's for good reason. Listen to your chief. Be willing to listen and learn as a mentor and develop you. A division officer willing to learn with a strong chief on his side is a dangerous combination that can make a powerful impact on any command. <clears throat> as I travel around the world, providing a career center, my command master, Keith Wilkinson, who's here in the back with us, he goes with me because it's that team, that partnership that we have that takes us and allows us to cross all the bridges and to reach down and talk to the most junior sailor to the most senior sailor and find out what, is that, what exactly is going on. So that, that relationship continues regardless of your pay grade all the way through your career. And so take, take charge and lean on that chief and they're gonna take you to the top. Now here's another piece of wisdom they may have discussed here at ODS. Maybe somebody talked about teamwork. Maybe. Maybe you guys saw this once or twice here. The focus on working together as a team you learned here in Newport is one of the most important lessons you can take away. Because being an Naval officer is a team sport. There has not been a job I've done in my 33 and eight years in the Navy that has not involved people around me. I would not be here where I am today if it was not for the people around me family and supporting me. This is how we go forward, this is why we're here, this is how we're able to go forward and do better things. Relying on the knowledge of peers, your leadership, your subordinates is crucial to success. And here's the key, teamwork doesn't end your progress, okay? As you progress in your careers, continue to be a team player, and to consider how you can go to a winning, war fighting team. Lastly, I'll talk to you about humility. These past few weeks, you've learned some of your weaknesses. Come to understand some of your limits. Maybe even push beyond some of your limits and realize you can do more. You've learned how to follow. You might say, as ODS, the five week lesson on humility. Humility is the willingness to look at yourself and understand you need others to succeed. You all got to this point because you're smart, skilled, and highly confident. And even though you know a lot, you must continue to learn from those around you. The day you stop learning is the day you stop growing. Now, I gave you some advice, <clears throat> but the best leadership teachers won't necessarily be someone like me or Captain Alcorn or someone who's been there 20 or 30 years. The best teachers will be those you lead. Perhaps some of your most junior sailors, as they reflect directly on you. You will undoubtedly learn some hard lessons each day, striving to be a better leader. A better leader. You'll look back and see all those folks who helped you get here. Your mentors, your peers, families, your chiefs, your junior sailors, and even their families. Now I'm thrilled to have been given the opportunity to see you in action yesterday working together as a team. And I'm confident that as you head out from here today, our Navy will be stronger and better because of the honor, courage, and commitment you have displayed by joining the United States Navy of Austria. And I would say welcome to the war trip. Thank you.
Several students are recognized by their fellow classmates, as well as the Officer Training Command Newport staff, for outstanding achievement during the five-week course of instruction. And to Carly Bromley, front center. The Honor Student Award is presented to the officer who best demonstrates overall excellence in the areas of academics, physical fitness, and military bearing. Consistently setting the example for her peers throughout the many challenges faced at Officer Training Command, the Honor Student Award goes to Benson Carly Brown. The Alfred Award is given to the officer who achieves the highest military grade derived from personal inspections, room inspections, and general military merit. This award is named after the Continental Soup of War, the USS Alfred. Commissioned in 1775, Alfred served as the flagship of Native Rhode Islander Commodore Isaac Hopkins and is regarded as the birthplace of Navy medicine as it was the first ship to appoint a dedicated ship surgeon. Serving as a role model of Navy pride and professionalism, Maintaining the highest military standards and providing inspiration <coughs> to all, the Alfred Award goes to Ensign Anna Lehman. <laughs> Ensign William Maggie, front and center. Pickens-Wills Peer Leadership Award is presented to the officer who personifies the highest standards of personal example, good leadership practices, and moral responsibility. Officers were nominated by their peers, and the winner was selected by the Officer Training Command staff. The winner of this award embodies the leadership traits and esprit de corps of Harriet Pickens and Frances Wills, the first two African-American women to commission as officers in the United States Navy. Their courage and collaborative leadership paved the way for today's inclusive meeting. The Pickens Wills Peer Leadership Award goes to Ensign William Maddie. <laughs> Ensign Brian Fitzgerald, front and center. The Edie Award, named for Lieutenant Thomas Edie, United States Navy, recognizes the highest achievement in academic and military performance. Lieutenant Thomas Edie, who emigrated from Scotland and settled in Rhode Island, was awarded the Navy Cross and the Medal of Honor for his courageous efforts. As a diver during the salvage of submarines SS-4 and SS-51 off of the coast of Massachusetts, he was a member of the Southeastern New England chapter of the Retired Officers Association at the time of his death in 1974. In recognition of this accomplishment, in addition to a certificate of achievement, the Military Officers Association of America has also provided a three-year membership to the EDI Award winner, Ensign Brian Fitzgerald. Spirit, dedication, teamwork, and unit identity. To symbolize the fact that these officers seated before you have completed their training, they will return their guidons to their class chief petty officers, Senior Chief Hospital Foreman Janine Sims Cologne, and Chief Quartermaster Miguel Alarza.
reaffirmation of the oath of office. When all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention. Class 24030, raise your right hand. I, state your full name. I, do solemnly reaffirm, do solemnly reaffirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or without purpose any of evasion. Only my last. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office on which I'm about to enter. Of the office on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Ready to order. Commanding Officer of Officer Training Command Newport would like to present to you your newly reaffirmed Naval Officer.